one of the most important books written in the last decade has to be Dr. Pierre Corey's The War on Ivermectin, the medicine that could have saved millions and ended the pandemic. Some of the comments on the, uh, the back cover are firstly, US Senator Ron Johnson said of the book, a fast paced engaging account of what went terribly wrong in our medical response to the pandemic. Dr. Tess Laurie uh, wrote, the war on ivermectin is a tale of corruption, censorship, and criminal intent. And no one was more on the front line during COVID and the ivermectin wars than Dr. Pierre Corey. Uh, Dr. Asim Maholtra notes, so he wrote again on the back cover, the war on ivermectin, Dr. Pierre Corey powerfully documents the deep seated corruption and relentless propaganda that led to the greatest humanitarian catastrophe in history, in deftly exposing the systematic corruption in how our medical systems and media, he has solidified his place among the COVID pandemic heroes. Well worth a read if you haven't actually got this book or seen it. Now, one of the most interesting chapters uh, in Dr. Corey's book was chapter 25, called The Counterfeit Trials. And in that, he actually detailed how many of the trials into ivermectin were simply fraudulent, designed to fail, often using underdosing, uh, using all sorts of tricks to hide any results. But he also noted uh, in this book about what was known as the Oxford Principle Trial, one which we are still waiting for results for. This is what Dr. Corey wrote. And this is in the middle of last year, 2023. He writes here, Oxford, Oxford's principal trial results have not yet been released, despite having been completed enrolment in July of 2022. It's now April 2023, that's when he wrote the book. Nine months later, curious? No. It's literally the biggest trial of them all, and that trial has gone quiet. Despite the fact the principal trial employed one of the most biased study designers of all, and Corey goes here, I suspect that the principal investigator was shocked to find that the study data revealed a massive efficacy for ivermectin, which is good. He and his colleagues are either still figuring out how best to distort or manipulate the data to show ivermectin is ineffective, or they don't even want to try to so publicly because it would incriminate them. Well, that was what Dr. Corey wrote in April of 2023. It is now February of 2024, and we still do not have a single report from the largest ivermectin trial undertaken by Oxford University. And if one goes to Oxford's website today, this is the message they have up about this principal trial. It says here, now this is a trial that started, if I'm correct, it started in April of 2021. And if you go to Oxford's website today about their principal trial. This is what they say. Thank you for your interest in the principal study. The study stopped recruitment in July 2022, and we've been continuing to collect the data we need for the analysis of the ivermectin and favipire arms in the trial since that date. It says participants in the trial are followed up for a year or so so we're able to answer the critical important questions about the effect of treating acute SARS-CoV-2 infections or symptoms and well-being over the long term. It says here, the team are currently working hard on collecting the one year follow-up data, which should be complete by the end of July, 2023. That's now seven months ago. Once data collection is complete, queries will still be, need to be made. Right. And the data will need, needs to be fully cleaned and subject to complex analysis. Well, here we are, February. They still haven't produced this data. This is over three, almost three, you're now getting on to three years since these people first started this trial. The question is, what do they have to hide? Now, why would Oxford try and delay and hide this data? Well, firstly, Oxford were the beneficiaries in an article here. 
titled Oxford COVID Vaccine Windfall Outweighs the Rest of the IP Sector Income. It says Oxford received £143 million in royalties from the COVID vaccine in the past year. More than all UK universities earned from intellectual property over the preceding 12 months. So we know if they had, if Oxford had have found that hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin was effective, the vaccines wouldn't have received, it, received their emergency use authorization. And because they did, Oxford got 143 million pounds in royalties. Talk about a conflict of interest. But it's not just Oxford. Exactly the same thing is happening here in Australia with our Monash University. Here we have Monash were also running a trial into ivermectin, which mysteriously the results seem to disappear. Now here's a press release from Monash University on the 2nd of March, 2022. Now we're almost getting two years ago. It says here, that this is about their ivermectin trial and update. The clinical trial has now commenced. It goes on here, the trial results are expected in 2023. Well, it's now 2024 and we've heard nothing again from Monash University about what has happened to the ivermectin trial. Exactly the same as we're seeing from Oxford. In this. Now, either these people are hopelessly incompetent and slow. What's the rush? There's still people dying from COVID every day. Or maybe a big black dog broke into their laboratories and ate all the paperwork involving these studies. Or perhaps... It was the financial pressure put on by Big Pharma. Now, Big Pharma just didn't have an incentive to knock out ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine so they could get the vaccines to market. It is also because of their antiviral tablets that they sell, Paxlovid from Pfizer and Molnupiravir from Merck, that are actually in direct competition or would be in direct competition if it was recognised that ivermectin was an effective treatment. And on the costs, ivermectin would wipe the floor with them. Ivermectin being off patent where anyone can make it, as where Molnupiravir and Paxlovid are patented medicines, highly expensive. So just have a look at the sale, potential sales that Paxlovid um, from Pfizer and Molnupiravir could have achieved. An article here from Global Data they estimated in July 2022, just after uh, Monash University put out that press release, and they estimated the sales of Paxlovid between 2021 and 2028 at 81 billion US dollars. So that would have been, that 81 billion would have been knocked out and would have been a zero, a duck egg, if these studies found that ivermectin was effective and which these studies are failing to produce the results for. What an incentive to hold the results back. And that's just Paxlovid. If you look at the data for Molnupiravir, uh, we see here again in October 2021, they estimated revenues for just one single year between 5 billion and 7 US billion, 5 and 7 US billion for 2022. So if you combine them, the estimated sales of these two drugs, Molnupiravir and Paxlovid, which would have been knocked out with a trial showing ivermectin was successful or effective, a big trial, the principal trial from Oxford or from Monash, right? that would have knocked out $100 billion in sales. And not just any $100 billion in sales. These drugs are highly, highly profitable. There have been studies done that have estimated the cost for Pfizer to produce Paxlovid at $13 a course. And they sell this for over $1,000 a course. No business in the world that I know of is able to produce something at a cost of $13 and sell it for over 1000 Or perhaps I should say any legitimate business these are profit margins that uh, the Colombian drug cartels 
would be very proud and happy if they could match them. Now, this is a scandal of the highest order. Billions of dollars of taxpayers' money are being rorted by these big pharmaceutical companies. We said, you know, this company that costs them less than $20, they are selling for over $1,000 because they have a monopoly, they have pa the patent to it. And they are knocking out the competition from ivermectin, which could have been made available to the consumers for a retail price of less than $20. But it's not only the cost to it, it's the efficacy. We've seen in, in smaller study after smaller study how effective ivermectin can actually be at reducing hospitalisation and deaths far, far better than the results, either molnupiravir or Paxlovid are showing. In fact, molnupiravir uh, is such, has so little effectiveness that the Europeans have said it's not worth the squirt and it can't even get approved in Europe. And yet here it is being approved in Australia and hundreds of millions of dollars of Australian taxpayers' money going to fund these drugs through the PBS. You would think that there must be one investigative journalist in this country that would get in and look at this. Or perhaps uh, we could have a Royal Commission. But we've got the Labor government under Mr Albanese prepared to break an election promise so he doesn't have a Royal Commission. This needs to be investigated. Why is Monash and why is also Oxford in the UK? Why are they suppressing these studies? Why are they holding them back? Why aren't they publishing the results? What are they trying to hide? And what influence has Big Pharma's money had on those decisions? Something is rotten. We need a Royal Commission to get to the bottom of this.